hello. This is an opportunity to break down my recent in conversation patch that I posted on my Instagram to some questions and some concerns, perhaps. Um, a little bit more trickery and skullduggery using Coalescence, which is Dylan Baston's incredible granulating plugin to which I have gotten much inspiration and I will continue to find ways to be in conversation with. Um, here today, towards the bottom of your screen, you are going to see Coalescence with its tiny points of addressed material. This has been generated by using a little neural network to look and find uh, similar sounds from the same sample source distributed. I focused in on one of those sounds. And in this case, it's gonna be the second cell of audio from this kind of heavy-handed, bassy bit of audio that I collected. Uh, that is being manipulated speed. The speed before, you may remember, I, I posted a something similar ask to this. Um, some other coalescence flip, but it was the grinding slow speed that gave the sample some of its its like effervescence, I guess, in the digestion patch previously. Here, speed is variable. It's moving. And as it does so, um, it creates a different warp and weft by which the sample proceeds. Let me just play a note. <laughs> back to the sample scene, you can see that it actually lines up really nicely with what's actually happening uh, and by design, right? There's not any accidental notes, even if we're not 100% sure where the LFO cluster will leave us. This is Kentaro Suzuki's cluster. This is 6.3. You can see where it's addressing here. I have playback speed is the most profound movement going on. But I also have the filter and shift of the filter in coalescence also being moved, but just in a very small degree. And finally, a little bit of animation in the slink filter to kind of go ahead and create just a little extra oscillation, so to speak, on the sound source. The last two, and this is something I do often with, with cluster, is I have it addressing cluster itself. So the main offset on the bottom here and the main bias right here, making it so that we have um, a little bit of variation in how the LFOs are proceeding together. It creates uh, a unexpected but rulesy uh, space by which things are going to be in motion. Um, some of the other things that are, are contributing significantly to the sound of this particular patch is I have two instances of OTT and a pitch map. Now pitch map is doing a lot, uh, as always, with giving some of that shimmer shine, that uh, harmonic excitement. But if you turn it off, it's still a lot is still going on. It don't doesn't need pitch map necessarily. It's just my aesthetics. So let's go ahead and hear it now with and without. <laughs> It, it starts to pitch-wise be less centered or direct. And I think for some of you out there, if you want to do some similar moves, you may indeed want to leave off the pitch map and really dive into what the sample is giving you. Um, and I think as it stretches across the different uh, playback degrees, you will also get really interesting outcomes. OTTs are mostly to rule in those aberrant frequencies and make it so that it really is dead center, kind of playing for the formants, playing for the vocal, esque sounds. Without the OTTs, it's a bit wild. I actually kind of like that. Maybe I should have done more work, but I, I feel like the OTTs are still part of the aesthetic, so I'm going to keep them, but I think there's something to be said for just playing towards the transient highs and not having everything be so tucked in as OTT will do. And that's the extent of this patch. Uh, so much cleverness from Dylan Baston's side and indeed Kentaro Suzuki, uh, but 
slink filter equally being still playing a role and a part and my beloved pitch map as always ever. Uh, some of you all asked as well about the visuals that I was using. This is on the master channel. This is an oscilloscope version 2.9. I believe it's a free plugin or it's a very inexpensive Max for Live plug and it allows you to have an oscilloscope running um, and then add some amount of definition of, of how that the XY axis is going to react as well as some of the color is going to be playing a role. Um, unfortunately, the floating screen is not going to work too well with OBS. I would have to kind of like do a lot of workarounds to make it so you could see that at the same time. Just go ahead and download this oscilloscope. Oscilloscopes in general are a fascinating space of both visualization of your sounds, but also that feedback loop of being able to see the curves and bends either in the spherical space or stretched across a more linear plane, I, I feel like gives you both insight and impetus to make more change. So it's worth it. All of it's worth it. Ableton 12 is worth it. Gosh, this thing is happening. So. If this indeed recorded and my floating head has anything to say so, it's to incite you to make more sounds in a vigorous way. Shake until stirred and imbibe deeply. Go forth. All right, bye, y'all.